where is Jimmy Hoffa? Tell so, me where he is. I think uh, the crux of, of your question is uh, a fallacy. I don't think Jimmy Hoffa is anywhere. I think, it's all, I think we've been sitting here for 46 years on a wild goose chase looking for a body that doesn't exist. And by the fact that we keep on looking and there are tips on tips and digs on digs and conversations on conversations, it, it just it builds this mythology and the mythology then feeds on itself. Um, and the more you dig and the more you look and the less you find, the bigger the mythology grows. I, I, and, and, and I just don't believe that that there is a body that was buried. I believe that they murdered him um, shortly after kidnapping him on the afternoon of July 30th, 1975. He disappeared from Telegraph and Maple, uh, which is now on Diamo, but at the time was uh, the Red Fox. Uh, the strip mall is pretty much exactly the same as it was 46 years ago. Um, and I believe he was taken to a nearby residence, murdered, and then transported to a, a sanitation company that the Detroit mob controlled and incinerated. I don't think it was a coincidence that in the coming months, that sanitation company mysteriously burned down in an arson fire before the FBI could get a search warrant. Um, and I believe that the Detroit mob, in their, in their criminal brilliance, honestly, have been actively putting forth a disinformation campaign or a misinformation campaign uh, where the Jackaloni brothers, uh, Jackie's dad and uncle, uh, Anthony, Tony Jack Jackaloni, and Vito Billy Jack Jackaloni, who have both been dead now uh, for quite a while. Uh, Tony died in 2001. Um, Billy died in, in 2012. But they were the masterminds of, of the Hoffa conspiracy. And part of pulling off the greatest murder of all time, really, I mean, the perfect murder, if you will, uh, was intentionally telling 100 people 100 different things and just filling the ether with all of these falsehoods. In fact, telling people that were powerful mob guys that had a right to know what had happened, they were feeding them disinformation. So brilliant plan. Yeah. So you had guys, and I still see it to this day. You have mobsters from all around the country that claim that they know what happened because I'm guessing they were at some social function with one of the Jackalones in the years that preceded, and the Jackalones were drinking, and 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 they, from what I could gather in my research, Billy and Tony like got off on the idea that they were spreading all these lies. Like, I know one of the things they enjoyed doing when they, whenever they were down at the Renaissance Center, they would allude to the people they were with that Hoffa was in the cement at the Renaissance Center, which he isn't. But I've heard numerous stories that Tony would be walking with people in the Renaissance Center to be like, hey, everyone say good morning to Jimmy. And then they'd be leaving and be like, everyone say wave good night, goodbye to Jimmy. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. So, you know, they were just, kind of getting their jollies by spreading all this different information. So as a result, you have this a thousand different stories coming from a thousand different people and none of it's true. I'm going by my FBI sources. I have. It's pretty, I will, you're pretty sure. I will, I will, sure? I will humbly say that nobody outside of the federal government or the actual hit team knows more about the Jimmy Hoffa conspiracy than I do. I've interviewed a, over two dozen FBI agents that work the case. I've interviewed almost every FBI agent that was on the Hoffa task force. I've interviewed a dozen mobsters that were either one step removed or two steps removed from this. Um, the FBI is adamant that this was quarterback by Tony and Billy Giacalone. And that it was carried out, or that t Tony Giacalone was kind of the head of the snake, um, arranging all the details, and then Billy Giacalone, his younger brother, was the boots on the ground uh, with the hit team. There is no prosecution in the murder of Jimmy Nobody's Hoffa, ever right? been arrested. Nobody's if they're ever so been sure, found. you've talked to 24 FBI guys that, oh, yeah, it was them, 
they have to have some evidence to have led them to that conclusion. Yeah, right? but they didn't all have the same it, hunch. It, it, it ain't it ain't enough evidence to bring into court though. Uh, well, I don't know. We'll get into well, that. Well, you know, with you know, but, but, but with Billy and Tony, you know, they went after them for other things. I mean, in the years after Hoffa disappeared, Tony Jacqueline had to go to prison for, for seven years for an extortion and a um, tax evasion case. Billy Jacqueline had a number of run-ins with the law in the year after, in the years after Hoffa, and a lot of it was just heat being brought on them because they were trying to jam them for Hoffa. And the FBI and I believe. That the hit team was made up of three people, uh, two being Detroiters and one being a, a East Coast a representative of the Genovese crime family out of New Jersey, um, who represented Tony Provenzano, who was part of the conspiracy. Um, Jimmy Hoffa was going to a mafia-style sit-down lunch meeting at the Red Fox with supposed to be with Tony Jacqueline, who was the Detroit mob street boss, and Anthony Tony Pro Provenzano, who was a, a, a capo regime uh, out of New Jersey but was also the most powerful Teamsters uh, chieftain on the East Coast. And Hoffa had a long-standing beef with Provenzano that he needed to settle and, and make peace with if he was going to take back the Union the year, uh, the, in a year later, in 1976, when the, the next presidential Teamster election was held. Um, and I believe that the hit team was made up of two people came from Tony Jack and one person came from Tony Pro. So I believe that it was Billy Giacalone and a guy by the name of Anthony Tony Pal Palazzolo, who at the time was kind of a nobody, but eventually rose to be quite a somebody in Detroit. He ran the entire downriver section of Detroit, um, all the rackets down in, you know, Allen Park, Wyandotte, Taylor, Woodhaven, all that area. Uh, and then the guy from New Jersey was uh, allegedly Salvatore Bergulio, who they called Sally Bugs, um, who was subsequently murdered himself uh, a couple years after Hoffa disappeared. But Billy Jacqueline didn't die until 2012. Tony Palazzolo, who I've been told the FBI believes was the trigger man, um, died in 2019. I was on the verge of getting him to do an interview with NBC, and then he died, <laughs> died of stomach cancer. Uh, but Tony Pal was caught on an FBI wire in the early 90s bragging of his role in the Hoffa uh, murder, he was also fingered by a number of high echelon informants as being involved in the murder conspiracy. And uh, another kind of, I don't want to say funny, I mean, I guess, I guess it's a funny story about how desperate the FBI is to finally put this thing to bed. Billy Giacalone in the last two years of his life wasn't really in the best mental shape and was living out his final days in a, a East Side retirement home. And the FBI bugged his room, thinking that they could get some, like, dementia-addled ramblings about Hoff. Like, that's how desperate they are. We're yeah, going to bug they're... a 90-year-old guy, a 90-year-old d- dementia-riddled mobster. We're going to bug his, his uh, uh, retirement home room to think that maybe we could solve the Hoff crime. But you said they have solved. So that's, I, well, no, but if they got him... Well, they've solved it, like, in theory they've solved it, but yeah. nobody's ever been brought to justice for it. Okay, why, if they're so resolved, why does every time somebody says anything about this, with any type of tip, are they digging up some guy's driveway in Warren? Right. Like, that, like if they, that's, the, that's the disconnect, because as far as I knew, and it, look, I'll defer, man, you know a thousand times more about this stuff than I do. I'm just saying, like, why I'm confused. I don't get it. If because it's so until resolved, you, why dig? Why dig up the driveway? Because... No body, no case. I mean, it's very difficult. I mean, yeah, but I think you, you said can acknowledge you... that he was incinerated. So why look for the body? Well, that that's part of the issue. Like, if you've been, yeah. there's no. I mean, it, it's it's a what's the chicken and what's the egg here? Like, yeah, I get it. I get uh, it. And I think all these digs are they're trying to find they're trying to find remains. There are. I think. Let me back up for a second. I subscribe to the incineration theory. There's a lot of retired FBI agents, and even current FBI agents that work the case that subscribe to the incineration theory. I think that's the one part of the case that isn't consensus in the FBI is where he is. Okay. The consensus is who did it. Gotcha. And, gotcha. and uh, how it was done and how it was coordinated. No, that makes sense. Uh, one more thing on Hoff, and then we'll, we'll move on. Because I, I just, and I'm sure this could be Googled, but just while I have the, the expert here. So he went to the lunch. He went 
into the restaurant, right? Right. They didn't just meet in the parking lot. Well, so it was a a, a two o'clock meeting at the Red Fox that he was stood up at. So he showed up at the Red Fox. Oh, okay. He sat in the lobby for like twenty minutes, half hour, talked to a couple people in there. He was supposed to be meeting Tony Jack and Tony Pro. Tony Jack was at his headquarters at the South Athletic Club, um, which is now the Fox Sports Detroit building. Um, but back then was Tony Jacoloni's headquarters on Evergreen and 11 Mile. Um, Tony Provenzano was at his union hall in New Jersey playing cards. Jimmy Hoffa was quite upset by being stood up. He left the restaurant at around 2.30, 2.40, went to what at the time was a um, hardware store, which is now a Planet Fitness, and uh, used a payphone. We don't no longer have payphones. Called his wife. Right? Called his wife. Yeah. Told his wife that he had been stood up and that he was going to stop at the grocery store and pick up some steaks to grill for dinner. And then at about 2.45, he was headed back to his car in the parking lot when he was intercepted by Tony Jackaloni's son's car, which was a 1975 maroon um, marquee, Mercury, Mercury marquee. Um, and the FBI doesn't believe that Tony Jackaloni's son was in the car, but that Tony Jackaloni's son was used by the hit team. And they believe that Billy Jackaloni, Tony Palazzolo, and Sal Fergulio were in the car. They told Hoffa, hey, Jimmy, we've moved the meeting with the two Tonys. We want to be somewhere more private. Get in the car, and we're going to take you to the meeting up the street. Do you think he knew right then he was in trouble? Or do you think he was no, still up and up? No, I, I think if he knew, he wouldn't have gone to the meeting at all if he thought he was in trouble. No, but there's something suspicious about their no showing that the car not, pulls not, up. Not, not necessarily in my pro, uh, with my protocol. Okay. I think Hoffa had been to enough mob sit-downs where things are changed at the last minute, especially okay. if it's in a public place and you want to be someone more private that's not atypical for that right okay. and there were two houses within a two or three minute drive uh one going west on maple into franklin and another one going uh north on telegraph to long lake road there were two houses that hoffa was familiar with going to meet the jackalonis at where he had had sit downs with them on prior occasions so if billy jackaloni who was tony's brother showed up and said and by the way, Tony and Billy had been the ones that had been brokering all this for the previous couple of weeks. So if Billy showed up in the passenger seat and said, hey, Jimmy, my brother didn't want to do it here. He wanted to do it at the house down the street. I think Jimmy Hoffa wouldn't. I think he would have. OK, that would have made sense. To Jimmy Hoffa. Suspicion. Right. OK, thank you for watching Spiro Avenue. Don't forget to hit like. It's like, so you're, right. it's, it's like you're reading a script. I am reading a script. No, you're not. Do I have a script out? You gave me a script. Oh, my God. OK. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. Do I do it the friendly one again?